Um, Troop 24, thank you for having me. Um, I very much appreciate having a few minutes of your time just to uh, talk a little bit about being an Eagle Scout and the thread that it runs, right? Amazingly obvious here, right? Everybody flip over the back of your program and look. I counted 100-ish Eagle Scouts. How many? 144. I said I couldn't count that high. Going down the going down the sheet, right? But it, to me, it's well. It, just real quick, my history, right? I have about 41 years involved in scouting. I started as a seven-year-old um, as a Cub Scout, moved all the way through the program. My life is bookended by Eagle Scouts. My grandfather is an Eagle Scout, and my son is an Eagle Scout. Uh, my father was a Star Scout. I made it to life. Um, was done with everything but the project, right? We see that all the time, those guys that get right there. Uh, um, I won't bore you with the details of why I didn't push through, but I'll say this. You have done something that is the greatest regret of my life. Right? which was not being able to come up here and stand and recite that oath with the Eagle Scouts that are in this room. I encourage everybody here that's not an Eagle Scout, that's still under 18 and able to do it, to do it. Because here's the thing. I talk about being bookended, right? My grandfather was born in 1920, still lives in Salado, Texas, going to turn 96 this year. He became an Eagle Scout when he was 14 years old. That would have been 1934, for those of you keeping score at home. So he's, what, been an Eagle Scout some 82 years. So what difference does that make? So 1934, shortly thereafter, we got into this conflict that became known ultimately as World War II. He took the patriotism and planted in him in the Boy Scouts of America. And before he was drafted, he went down and enlisted in the United States Army. So he was in boot camp, going through basic training, working through the system, and somebody posted a flyer, a bill somewhere, said anybody interested in becoming an officer, come to this meeting spot, come talk, come be interviewed. We'll see if you have what it takes. So when he got there, he was wearing this ring, which most of you can't see because it's very small, but it's the eagle badge on this ring. It was given to him by a gentleman in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, where he grew up. He was wearing this ring, and he sat down. There was a major on the other side of the table, and they started to talk, and my grandfather was there, and the major looked down, and he said, Private Kerr, are you an Eagle Scout? Well, yes, sir, I am. They spent about 10 minutes talking about scouting, not about the army, not about the war, not about all of these things, these events that were going on. Because he was an Eagle Scout, my grandfather was accepted into OCS, Officer Candidate School, and everything from his life turned on that moment that he was recognized as an Eagle Scout. He became an officer, he had a lifelong career, he retired as a lieutenant colonel in the army, he went to uh, Siam, which is you know, Thailand. Now he got to shoot a cobra. Uh, he had a cobra coming into his house that he shot in Thailand. He went to Brazil. My father was able to learn Portuguese and spend time seeing the world. He was able to create a son through that process. He went to the Naval Academy where he met my mother, who was a nursing student at the University of Maryland. Eventually along came I. How different would his life have been without that moment? to be an Eagle Scout. Without taking that effort, how many things do you do when you're 14 years old, 15 years old, 16 years old, that impact your life the way that becoming an Eagle Scout impacts your life? Right, so whatever, that's like ancient history, right? World War II, whatever, right? We come forward a little bit, right? I've already told you it's the epic fail of my life. I think my dad's disappointed by it too. Not that I haven't done some cool things, and I've got a lot of things I'm proud of, I don't have a lot of regrets. But one of the things that I was happy to be involved with is my son reaching the rank of Eagle Scout, right? And lest we think that being an Eagle Scout is less important now, his story is this. 
I'm a computer guy. I do work in IT. Uh, um, I was out with one of my clients working one day, uh, um, and the co-owner of the, the company came in, started talking to me. He says, "Is that your car?" I had a, I had a, I'm proud of my Eagle Scout sticker on the back of my car. Right? You've all seen them. I said, "It is." He said, "You got an Eagle Scout?" I said, "Yes, sir, I do." So we spent 10 minutes, right? It's amazing how many things in life hinge on a 10 minute conversation. We spent about 10 minutes talking about my son, going through his Eagle Scout, his life, talking about his project. Fast forward a few months, my son uh, was going through training to become a personal trainer, because he's built a lot like me. Uh, um, not at all, <laughs> he's like a fitness model now, whatever. Uh, um, so he needs to have an internship. Well, this company was a gym, right? So I picked up the phone and I called Phil. I said, Phil, my son needs an internship. Do you guys do that? He's working on being a personal trainer. I said, oh, Jay, we, we really don't do that. It's a, it's, a, it's a big pain. It's a lot of work for us. Uh, we just stopped taking that on a long time ago. Right? I said, oh, no, no problem. I understand. He said, well, wait, wait, wait. Is this your son, the Eagle Scout, that we talked about? Yeah, it's the only son I have. Let's give him my number. We'll work with him. Right? Long story short, I'm just about to run that. Long story short, he got an internship, which turned into a job, which turned into a manager's position. Uh, and now, some almost seven years later, he still works for that gym when he's not at Virginia Tech getting his degree in training and fitness and and uh, to human nutrition, right? It's too early to determine what that will all mean to him. But the point is, once you are here, once you have done this, everything about you is different. People look at you differently. You are a marked man. And there, I, I mean, I've been looking for it. Somebody else tell me. What you can do as a 17 year old and put on your resume for the rest of your life and have it be meaningful, have it have an impact, have people look at you differently, right? Embrace it, live it. Work everything you do through the lens of the scout oath and the scout law, right? It is a no go, no go proposition as we look at our choices. And it's the only tool that you will ever need to be successful, to be honorable, to be useful as a human being. The last thing I'll do, we talked a little bit about the origin of you. Um, I, I was a scoutmaster, I just retired. I was, I was committee chair and scoutmaster for 14 years uh, for a troop in Virginia Beach. Uh, I've been able to speak, I think this is the 24th Eagle Court of Honor I've been invited and had the pleasure of speaking in. Uh, um, one of the things that we do, and uh, this was started uh, many, many years ago by a, a mother that ran a lot of our boards with me. She would often ask some version of what's the hardest point in the scout law to live by? If you could add a 13th point to the scout law, what would you add? So I started in my consideration of, of Eagle recipients, working through the process of, as I look at a young man and I could add a point to the scout law, what would it be? So I've had a little while to think about this and there are lots of words that would describe any of this. But as I think about it, to me, it is that exact lot of words that sums it up. Eddie is unique. And if I could add a word, I would add a scout is unique. And I want all of you that are still scouts and scouters to remember that that's part of the light that shines through us that is scout spirit. Right? We are not to be robots. We are not to be automatons. This is not some little boy scout, Baden Cow's army. Right? The reason that there are all of these merit badges is because there's something in scouting for everyone. And you guys, we guys, need to continue to embrace that.
and understand that it is the unique Eagle Scouts like Eddie Gustin that make this program what it is and will let it flourish for another hundred years. Anybody disagree with me? Is that reasonable? Fair? So, with that, I would say thank you for letting me uh, prattle on for a few minutes. I know that you have a grandfather that is also an Eagle Scout, so perhaps you too will have an Eagle ended life where you can have a grandfather and someday, a long time from now, brother, uh, have a son that will become an Eagle Scout. Uh, um, but with that, am I allowed to invite Mr. Clark up? I don't want to take your thunder, but I know uh, uh, that John Clark, your grandfather, also has a few words for us this afternoon. So, Eddie, again, thank you very much for having me. I'm so proud of you that you don't even believe it. See, I've known Eddie since before he was Eddie. Uh, um, and uh, it's, 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 it's an unbelievable thing to see here. There are, there are something to work for.